So um, I've actually decided to make it easy for you to not worry about sharing what I say, and I've decided to make my speech completely political and policy-free. So you're going to hear what I think, not what government thinks. So having said that, that's quite worrying for me. I feel like I'm doing this with one hand tied behind my back. As others have already said, very worried about following Sir David Attenborough, but luckily I think I'm going to agree with everything he said, but just say it in a slightly different way. And um, also worrying because I'm not a landscape professional, I'm a biologist. But I've worked with many brilliant landscape professionals over the years, several of whom are in this room this afternoon, and I hope I have learned enough from them to be credible on this platform. But I did find myself thinking, well, the word landscape, I think sometimes trips us up, those of us in my world. Certainly in my world, we get a bit hung up on, is it landscape, is it biodiversity, is it wildlife, is it the natural environment? And what does landscape actually mean? Oh, there should be a slide there. Is it something like this? Is it one of these wonderful views that we designate as national parks and AOMBs? Is it the day-to-day -day view we see from our window as we travel to life? Is it that really sometimes rather awful planting in supermarket car parks? You know, but it doesn't matter, does it? And I think one message for me and one message from Natural England this afternoon is it doesn't matter whether we call it landscape or the natural environment or wildlife or biodiversity or an ecosystem service, it's all the same thing. We're all talking about the same thing. And everybody I've talked to this afternoon over that wonderful lunch is saying the same thing, that this is about that part of our lives that make life worth living. It's the beauty we see. It's the wildlife around us. It is the view that makes you go, wow. It's the culture and the history we see in the world around us. It's writ large in our landscape. And it's the way we access and connect with and enjoy those landscapes. So if you hear people in Natural England talking about the natural environment, we mean all of that. It's landscape and more. I think the second thing that we've all been saying this afternoon, all of our speakers and everybody I've been speaking to over lunch, is it's that landscape, whether it be in town or country, coast or, or upland or whatever, it is that landscape that, and it's the, that, that brings life to life. And it's the role of the people in this room this afternoon. It is your job to bring those landscapes to life, to make them relevant for people, to build those connections, and to therefore bring us all those benefits that landscape brings for us, and to help people find landscape, a value in those landscapes. And as Sir David has said, it's even more imperative than ever that we get this right. I think we're facing three challenges as a world and as a nation. We're facing biodiversity losses on unprecedented scales. We're facing the challenge of climate, which are climate change and carbon. And we're also facing physical and mental health crises. Well-managed, resilient landscapes are the answer to all three of them. And I'm not gonna bore you with lots of numbers because it's not that sort of event. But we know just a few things, in case you doubt any of it, a few things just to remind you of the scale of all of those three challenges. The State of Nature report that was published a couple of weeks ago tells us that the most, the well-monitored, the ones we really know about, species in the UK have declined by 13% since 1970. And that's a pretty big number. 15% of British species are threatened with extinction. And we know that, don't we, from what we observe in our day-to-day -day lives, the things that were common when I was a child and now are on endangered species list, things like the red campion. Shocking that those things that we knew as commonplace as children are no longer at risk of not being there. And we see this globally as well in the IBES reports, in the global assessment reports, these shocking figures that make the headlines about the potential loss of insects, 10% of insect species across the globe threatened. And that's not just a problem for people like me who care about species, it's a problem for us. One of my colleagues uses the phrase species kaplunk, you lose one thing and your whole ecosystem collapses and all of the things that support our lives collapse. I hope I'm not frightening you. And climate change as well. You don't need me to tell you the impact that climate change is having in the country that we live in, let alone around the world. We're seeing some species moving out of their natural range. We're seeing changes to landscapes, sometimes good, sometimes bad, as climate change takes an impact. And we're seeing flooding, droughts are now becoming so commonplace they're not even always reported on the news. And just a few thoughts on health as well, just to really hopefully bring it home to you. One in four people in the UK now suffer a significant mental health problem, and one in 10 school-aged children will suffer from depression and anxiety on a regular basis. 28% of adults 
and 10% of five-year-olds are now clinically obese. And only just over two-thirds, 66% of men and barely half of women take the recommended small levels of exercise a week. So we really have got real stark problems facing us. But the good news is you are the answer. Making those resilient, well-managed landscapes is such a big part of the, few, of, the, of the solution to this. Recovering nature, putting back habitats, putting back landscapes across the country is, all of, is what the most important way we can tackle climate change, tackle biodiversity, and address those problems. Just again, focusing on those people and the mental and health well-beings. Over the last 10 years, Natural England has been monitoring people's attitudes and people's use of the natural environment. And there's good news here as well. We know now that nine out of 10 adults are aware of, of they personally say that they are concerned about the natural environment. And 62% of adults in the UK say they're concerned about biodiversity losses. It certainly wasn't like that when I started working in this world. And we know that more and more people are using the natural environment. The number of regular visits to the natural environment, not just the countryside, but to, to green spaces and so on, has almost doubled over 10 years, from 2.9 billion to 4 billion people regularly using the environment. And the number that's really struck home at me as well, the fact from that research, is most people now are saying the reason they go to the natural environment is they know it's good for them. They're doing it for their health. They're doing it for their well-being. And it doesn't take much. Exeter University says two hours a week is all you need to get those health benefits. And it doesn't cost much either. The um, Wildlife Trust research shows that for every pound they invest in their social well-being programs, they get £8.50 back in terms of investment in savings to, to health service and so on. So this stuff works. It really works. But we also know there's a huge variation in the people that are benefiting from those environments. It often looks like that. It's often relatively well-to-do people. That's Greenwich. It's often well, relatively well-to-do people in relatively well-to-do areas who are making those visits. And we can map now the disparity of the communities who do not access the natural environment, either because it's not available to them or it's simply not part of their culture. So again, a really important part for this profession of thinking about how do we make this available to everybody. So you don't need me to draw the conclusion. Well-planned, well-managed, resilient landscapes are more, so much more than just a nice place to be in. They will play that major role in, in recovering nature. We need places that wildlife can spill out of our existing designated sites. We need those places for wildlife to move and grow and thrive. We need those carbon sinks, and we need those places where landscapes and nature can adapt to a changing climate to be larger and more resilient. And we need landscapes where all of us, as individuals, as families, and as communities, can take responsibility for our mental and physical health. So good luck. Natural England's right beside you all.